It's where you look at it. Listening to Mamma, first thing I have to do is dispense with this. <laughs> I'm going to talk about dream. And it entered my head there when she said, this lady on a bicycle arrived in to kill Finn. Canvassing, preaching, talking. And Mamma listened. She joined. Did any of the pair of them think that day in Kilfinnan that one of them would be addressing a full house in a church of a different denomination in Mount Street in Dublin sometime? So it was a wonderful dream. That dream has happened. The Irish Country Women's Association couldn't go anywhere now. But I'll talk about dream. Some of you might not know the GA. What does it mean? It means the Gaelic Athletic Association. And for 500 years, from 1365 on, it was illegal for any group of people to come together for the purpose of organising sport. Now that, it lasted for 500 years. It was repealed. And then as the 1860s went on, post-famine times, associations grew up. Rugby, you can name them out. But a dreamer from County Clare, his name was Michael Cusick. He said, shouldn't somebody set up an organisation to foster, to promote Gaelic sports? Sports that are in Ireland, even though they were illegal for hundreds of years, and in the case of hardly thousands of years. That was his vision, his dream. There was no Facebook or anything to advertise a meeting that he called for the Congress on the 1st of November 1884. Maybe pamphlets here and there. Seven people turned up. A strange assortment. Michael the Dreamer himself, a noted athlete who had won three eight titles in England, a rugby international who was a member of the RIC, two journalists, a man whose son was later military advisor to Churchill during World War II. They were the same. Whatever you say about them, they all put their hands up when Michael Cusick proposed we'd found this association, the Gaelic Athletic Association. Promote Gaelic games, principally at the time, athletics, football as we know it now, which was different then and how. That was the first dream, only seven. And then the plan was, in every parish in Ireland, get somebody that will promote the same dream. And it was so successful because it was for the people in their own locality. Set up a club, it was no longer illegal, and organise whatever sports the local people want. And it was so successful that in a very short time to describe in a newspaper, it was spreading like a prairie fire. <laughs> Carry the dream on then, 1887, three years later, somebody got another idea. Let's organise all Ireland championships. That's the first time I heard the phrase of all, I didn't hear it, but I read about the all Ireland. <laughs> okay, somebody said, God, that's a great idea. We will. And they had a meeting, they made the draws and everything. Until somebody said, where are we played them? They didn't have one yard, square yard of land anywhere in Ireland. They had local farmers naturally gave feed, but where would we play this all Ireland challenge? It was Loud and Michel Longdale, there's one of them, being coward there and more. And the Bohart couldn't be anything. The help of God is on the road, or on the side of the road. And somebody came, strange source again. He was the landlord, Lord de French, that owned the vast estate where Vincent Hospital, Ellen Park Golf Club stand today. He said he can have this, he was fascinated with the idea of all I have and spoke. Fascinated with the idea, I'll put my lands at your disposal. So the first game ever in the first championship was played there in his land just up the road. Limerick commercials against a team from County Meath called Dowdall. 
And believe it or not, there was a first man of the match. We think it's a modern television gimmick, man of the match or woman of the match or so. There was a man of the match award that day. Lady Day French was so fascinated with one of the Limerick players <laughs> that she secretly invited him to dinner. Now, that was better than any piece of glass. <laughs> there were the first championships, partly successful, which was a first, being got to us no long. Championships of the following year started, and there were long started when somebody got another crazy dream idea. Let's abandon the All Ireland Championships and go on a promotional tour of the United States. Now, they had neither money nor any. It was an idea, but it was a wonderful idea, possibly concocted in a pub. <laughs> a tour of the United States. What will we call the tour? The American Invasion. We take America by storm. <laughs> Abandoned the championships and they selected 53 athletes and hurlers, no football. They said if we're going to tell America about ourselves, we have staged all Ireland championships. We are worth knowing about. We'll do a bit of promotion in Ireland. And some tailor in Dame Street, you know, how would we dress? We should all be dressed the same. And again, Cow Dare and Mohart, the tailor, the name is lost now, in Dame Street, Dublin, he decided to rig them out, which he did. And the 53 of them, with three bands, they marched down, this is 1888, marched down Dame Street, up O'Connor Street, which was Sackville Street at the time. From there out to Donnybrook, have I seven minutes gone already? <laughs> and the GA is only born. <laughs> you, could, you could call that a neighbour to birth. <laughs> Promotional tour out to Donnybrook, staged a hurling game athletics from there to Kingstown, which is done there. The following day they did the same in Dundalk, from there to Tullamore, from there to Kilkenny. On horseback from Kilkenny to Thurles, where the dream started, from there to Cork on a liner. And the American invasion was underway, financial disaster, but it was promotion. <laughs> now see that my time is running out, that was the beginning. Being got to no law. My mom mentioned a bicycle. I started a bicycle race, men and women in Ballina this morning. I was watching the ladies of Ireland play the Camogie finals in Crow Park this afternoon. And I was there now over the past four weekends. Seeing that I have now retired, and each day I stood at the bottom of Fitzgibbon Street, where you can take in the North Sector Road up and down, and Jones's Road that leads up to Crow Park. A massive colour, the different colours, four counties involved, mingling with each other, uh, looking forward to the games later. The games were fantastic, and on my calculations that I made, they were watched by the greatest crowds at any sports events in the world that those days. Over 80,000 people each time, not today, but in the previous three. That's what the beginning, the weak beginning of the dreamers has led to. It has the soul of Ireland because it has the local people with it, the communities. And I have one little story about how you describe that. A name that's in currency at the moment, Martin O'Neill. He'll be the next manager of the soccer team, they tell me. I first got to know him when he was playing in all Ireland College's final for St Malachy's of Belfast against the Cork team. I later broadcast games that he played minor football for Derry in all Ireland semi-finals. Had a life in soccer. Successful. And I met him when that era was over, happened to run into him in London accidentally one time. We sat down and we spoke about those college games and he said to me, do you know when I went playing soccer, my father disapproved. Almost so much that he didn't speak to me for a while. 
won two FA Cups in England, won a European Cup in Barcelona, beating Barcelona, to which he invited his father. And when the whole thing was over, he said to the father, do you still think I did the wrong thing? And the father didn't answer for a while. I don't know, he said. I know it was great and all that, but there's no way it would compare with winning the Derry County Championship with King Wayne, <laughs> the local little club. And that's the grip that the GAA has on the people. It's a wonderful thing. Other sports are as good. I wish I'd got nine minutes. But Emile Mahalwe, Thon Ehid the Home took, and it's a lovely place to be, and thank you for the invitation to be here. Good Emile Mahalwe.